Hi, this is Tony Henderson Mayers, and I want to thank you for tuning in to Moments of Inspiration, Encouragement, and Prayer. And I know you may be thinking, well, you talk about romantic relationships. Yes, but I also talk about family, friendship, business relationships, relationships with yourself, God, and your money. And this series, Moments of Inspiration and Prayer, um, helps us to get a better relationship with God. And so I hope you enjoyed this portion of my Tony Henderson Mayers page. And without further ado, here is moments of inspiration, encouragement, and prayer. Hello there, each and every one of you. This is Tony Henderson Mayers, television, radio, relationship expert, author, and entrepreneur. I'm known as Wise Courtship all over social media, and this is moments of inspiration, encouragement, and prayer where we come together to, you know, just speak into something, a life into each other, and to um, go over God's word and to pray for your concerns and give you some encouragement as you go out of the door. So I want to thank each and every one of you for watching me on various platforms like Periscope, Facebook. Twitter, Twitch, um, YouTube, and also on my podcast, The Wise, Wise Courtship uh, Philosophy and The Wise Courtship Devotional. So thank you guys so much for tuning in. Make sure you go ahead and share this broadcast by touching, yeah, way down there. <laughs> If you're on to um if you're on Periscope, you can tweet it out, you can share with all your followers, and you can put it on Facebook. And of course, if you're watching me via Facebook, you can make a face uh, watch party to share with your um, followers by putting it on your timeline or invite individual people into the broadcast. So let's go ahead and greet some people who are here already. Thank you guys so much for being here. Lakeisha is here. I just, you know, Lakeisha, I love you so much, girl. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for joining. She is so faithful. She's such a true friend and she has shared the broadcast. She's watching us via Facebook. So thank you so much for that. Mike Maldo, good to see you. You're watching me via Facebook. So thank you so much for that. And so if you guys are coming on via Periscope, via Twitter, all that, make sure you greet me so I can greet you. So thank you so much too for sharing the broadcast. I appreciate that so very, very much. So let's get into the word, shall we? Let's um, now turn to um, Matthew 7. Matthew 7, 21 through 23. Matthew 7, 21 through 23. And I believe I'm reading from the New International Version, which I usually read from, although um, I'm not opposed to other versions now. Okay. <laughs> so um, a little bit about this scripture as you guys are turning there. Um, a, a little bit about this scripture is that this chapter is very interesting of Matthew, Matthew, because it goes from talking about judging others. Um, many of us know that scripture about judging others, but it also talks about how we should pray. You know, we ought to ask, seek, and knock. And then it goes into talking about how the gate to God or to getting the that road is narrow. Um, and then it talks about um, true and false prophets. You know, we all into that. Um, but then it goes into what I'm going to read today, which is true and false disciples. That, that Those are followers of Jesus Christ. In other words, those us, okay? <laughs> That's what it's talking about on today. So I want to read that to you, Matthew 7, um, 21 through 23. And it reads this way, not everyone. Someone say, not everyone. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only the one who does the will of my father who is in heaven. 
Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, didn't we not prophesy in your name and in your name drive out demons and in your name perform any miracles, many miracles? Then I will tell them plainly, I never knew you. Away from me, you evil doers. And so today I'm going to talk briefly about the scariest scripture in the Bible. I personally, now this is when I put my little personal uh, touch on things. You may find another scripture scarier, but I believe this is one of the scariest scriptures in the Bible. And that is because, first of all, uh, this scripture is, is geared toward us. Those who say we believe in Jesus Christ. I know we say we are in a Christian country when we're talking about America. And I know I have many people watching me from all over the world, literally. So thank you guys for watching. And I, I think I forgot to say thank you for those who are watching via my website. Thank you so much for doing that. I appreciate you. And so um, many of you are watching me all around the world. But I know here in America, we have claimed to be a Christian country. And sometimes we do things that are so contrary. Somebody say contrary in the chat box. Sometimes we do things that are so contrary to what God intended because it is not even written in his word. Uh, you Listen, I'm not trying to step on toes, but if I do step on it, just say ouch and know that I love you anyhow, okay? <laughs> I don't have nothing to get you. I don't know what you're doing in your home and all of that. So listen. What I have found is that many of us, we all have come, the Bible says we all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So there's none of us who are perfect. We're not perfect. We know that. But we fall short many times. But you know, it's so much easier to read the earlier part of this scripture. You know, when you talk about true and false prophets and now during what we believe to be the end times, we're talking about that a lot. You know, that's a false prophet. and That's not, that's not a prophet that is of God. But have we we examined ourselves to see if we are a true disciple of Jesus Christ. Mm, if you believe you're a true disciple, put true disciple in the chat box. It's so important to know that because I believe and what I have seen is that people will spend their whole lives working on something and believing something and really believing that they're all right, maybe only to find out later that they're all wrong. There are many religions. There are many religions. They kill in the name of Jesus Christ. Good to see you, Sage. Good to see you on today. LaDonna, good to see you. Thank you so much for joining me. Uh, Sage is joining via Periscope, and LaDonna Marie is joining via Facebook. Good to see you guys. And listen, many people have killed others, all in the name of the Lord. Okay, we've got hate organizations that believe in Jesus Christ. They believe in him. But somehow they have lost their way because hate has been their number one way of dealing with one with the other. When we know the Bible tells us that there are two commandments that are so important. One is to love the Lord God with all our heart, mind, and soul. And the second is like this, is to love our neighbor as ourselves. And somehow, somehow we'll miss that. Somehow we miss the boat uh, when it comes to uh, doing what we need to do in God. But if you go back and look at this scripture, for those who just joined me, I'm, I'm reading um, and teaching from uh, Matthew 7, 21 through 23. And if you look at this scripture, what's so scary about it is because it starts off saying not everyone. And let me just dispel a myth here because we believe, some people believe that as long as we're good people and we treat folk right, all of us can, all of us are going to go to heaven. All of us are going to be with God. But it's telling us right there in that scripture, no, there's some conditions. <laughs> there are some conditions. There's some things that can, um, can, can keep you from being there. There's some things that make you think you're going, but you're not. Is anybody with me on, on today? And so it says, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. And so it's a possibility to call on the name of the Lord, to, to, to read his word, to, to, to worship him, to do all of these things and still not know him. Oh my gosh. I believe though, if you do read the word and you really are reading it and you really study it, you will get to know him. 
Okay, you will get to know him. But there are so many people who do the demonstrative things of the religion. Some people who will really want to get up the, the corporate ladder of Christ. Okay, <laughs> if that, you know, I'm just using that term. Uh, there's no such thing as that because God tells us if we want to be great in God's kingdom, we got to learn to be the servant of all. That's what we got to be the servant of all if you want to be great. And so the scripture tells us, not everyone will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only the one who does the will of my father who is in heaven. And so it is important. Somebody say it's important. It is important to, to live according to God's word. Oh, I know. I know. I know we're not going to always do right. I know that we're going to trip up. We're going to mess up sometime, but we ought to be caught trying. Somebody said, I'm going to be caught trying. Put that in the chat box on today. I'm going to be caught trying. Because it tells us here in the scripture that if we are, if we do not do the will of our Father, we may be missing the mark there. Verse 22 says, many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and in your name drive out demons and in your name perform any miracles? When you look at this, this is a this is an elevation of, of gifting here. Not only did they cry out, Lord, Lord, but they're able to prophesy. That's one of my gifts. I don't talk about it all the time. You know, some people, when they have that gift of prophecy, honey, they're going to start that ministry, right, where they're going to make money. <laughs> <laughs> where they're going to prophesy into your in, into your life and all of that. And they make money from that. And we love running the prophets and different things like that. But listen, one gift is not better than the other, but we pride ourselves in these gifts. And here we see a person saying, didn't I not prophesy in your name? Didn't I not drive out demons? You know, these are the things that we get real excited about. Lord, if we saw somebody drive out demons, oh my goodness, isn't this person anointed? Isn't this person set apart? Isn't this person, you know, a, a, a true believer of Christ? You know, when I pray on this broadcast, I really don't do a whole lot of hooping and hollering. Now, don't get me wrong. I can go to church and go in, okay? Even when I'm teaching, I can go in. But listen, it's far more important for me to teach or pray and you get it. Oh my gosh, it's far better for me to teach you and you get it than me to be doing all this hooping and hollering and you don't get anything. For me to hoop and holler through a prayer and I can't get a prayer through. Oh, y'all not going to help me on today. <laughs> it's far better if I say two words and get your healing, get your healing prayer through than me hooping and hollering and, and, and speaking in tongues and rolling on the floor. And all of that's good. It's good if it's effective. And so here we see in the scripture, it says, didn't we not drive, prophesy in your name? Did we not drive out demons in your name? Did we not perform many miracles? Not just one miracle, constant miracles. We did all these things in your name. And that goes to show that we can say in the name of Jesus, all we want. But if it's not sincere, if we don't know him, that's like you calling me and asking me for a favor and I don't know you. I'm, I'm on the phone like, who this? Not even who this, who this? Okay. I don't know you. Who are you? And so very often we're, ca we're casting out demons in, in God's name. We're prophesying. We hooping. We hollering. We going through all kinds of things and we don't even know him. Anyone who knows me, when I do a broadcast, especially in the Wise Courtship family, when I stop and I'm just sitting there blinking, that means that's a Salah moment. We have to think about that thing. You know, I, I love, you know, I love church. I've been in church all my life. My father's a pastor. You know, I'm one of them people that just stayed right there. You know, I just love church. But I, you know, as a child, I was saying, if you do all of these things and you don't know God, you're wasting your time. Huh? Somebody put your waste in your time in the chat box. And so it is so important. This is why it's the scariest scripture, I believe, in the Bible. Because listen, this person says, many will say, he said not even just one, but many, many, many people will say this. Oh my gosh. There's a whole lot of us that's missing the mark. He said, many people will say this. Many will say to me on that day. 
the day of judgment, the day that we come before God. Many will say on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and, and, and drive out demons in your name and in your name perform many miracles? Then I will tell them plainly, I never knew you. Away from me, you evil doers. And when you read some other trans uh, translations, it talks about you basically, you made a prophet. Huh? Y'all go read the message one. I would pull it up, but we about to run out of time. Let's read different translations of that. <clears throat> you made a prophet of it. You lived a good life off of the gospel. You, you, you brought on all the antics. You kept the crowd engaged. You got people yelling and screaming and feeling like they, they've met the Lord. You've done all of that. But depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I never knew you. That's a scary scripture. Somebody say, that's scary. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> that's scary. Because I don't know about you guys. It's nice to be known by man. It, it, it has its benefits. It's wonderful. It's great. But I'm here to tell you, I'd rather be known by God than be known by man. Oh, y'all didn't hear me on today. I wonder if anybody else is there with me. I'd rather be known by God than be known by man. Because when that day comes that I have to stand before him, I don't want him to say to me, Depart from me, I never knew you. And I said, well, God, I did all this. I did all this in your name. He said, you know what? I never knew you. Depart from me, you evil doer. Lord have mercy. Somebody say, uh, yes, yes, indeed. That's right. That's it. <laughs> Somebody's joining me via Twitch. Good to see you. Uh, another uh, salt. Good to see you. Is that salt lick? Good to see you. Thank you so much for joining in. And so listen, beloves, I'm going to um, go before you in prayer. It is scary, LaDonna. That's a scary thing. And that's why, listen, my mother always said, you know, sometimes when people are are, are, are playing in church and, and playing with God and all this kind of stuff that people do, you know, um, say God is, is the most supreme person. He is the most holy person. And it's not to say that you couldn't laugh and have a good time as you blessing him, as you honoring him. But we don't we don't have time to play games. God is, listen, God is not a mocked. You know, whatever a man soweth, that will he also reap. God is not like a man. Sometimes we want to treat God like a man. God is not a man. He is a spirit. What is a spirit? A spirit has a mind that thinks a will that acts, but does not live in a body of flesh. He is holy God. He is creator. And when you come to God, you got to worship him in spirit and in truth. And so, yes, I'd rather be known by God. Ooh, my God. Well, let's go before the Lord in prayer. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yes, indeedy. So let's go before God in prayer. And I didn't have any prayer con uh, prayer requests ahead of time other than um, a couple of people that I did speak to just on a casual basis. So we will pray, include them in our prayer requests. Now, listen, when I put these glasses back on, please put your prayer request up through the chat box and I will include it at that time. Father God, in the name of Jesus, God, we bless you. We honor you, O oh God. We give you all honor, glory, and praise. We salute you, God. We recognize that you are the maker and creator of all things. God, you are supernatural. You have all power in your hands, and that's why we come to you, knowing that you are a rewarder of those who diligently seek you. First of all, God, we ask that you forgive us for all of our sins, the things that we have done wrong, the things that um, we know we should have done, but we didn't do it. For not having enough faith to use our gifts and talents. Some things that we're still wrestling with, oh God. God, we just leave them at your feet, oh God, to help us. God, we want you to forgive us for our sins. Because we, because you, you said if we confess our sins, you would be faithful and just to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. God, we, we want you to give us a clean heart and renew a right spirit that's within us. <clears throat> First of all, God, we want to thank you. Anybody 
Nobody thankful for anything here. God, we thank you for life, health, and strength. We thank you for food, clothing, and shelter. God, we thank you so much that you have been uh, for all of the things you have done for us. The things we take for granted, like the sun shining and the rain. God, for being able to breathe in and out. God, for waking up just to see another day. God, we are so grateful. God, we are grateful for keeping us in this pandemic, oh God. Some of us may have lost jobs, but somehow you've been helping us to make it from one day to the next. God, you've healed our bodies and we're so grateful. God, we just honor you on today. What are you grateful for? Go ahead and put that up through the chat box. Hallelujah. God, we just honor you and we bless you. And now, God, we put before you, uh, first of all, the Wise Courtship family. We pray for them, oh God, all individuals and the families that they represent. God, all the people who come to Wise Courtship for healing in the area of relationships. God, we pray, oh God, for them, uh, each and every one of them, individually and collectively. God, we pray for uh, LaDonna for her headache, oh God, even now in the name of Jesus. You said by Jesus' stripes we are healed. And God, I believe in your supernatural power because I've seen a piece of your power, God, and I believe oh God, that you will heal. We're touching and agreeing right now, oh God, that whatever the root of that headache is, God, that you will uproot it, oh God, expose it, oh God, in the name of Jesus so that it will come back no more. God, we pray for Arlene um, um, Paris. We pray for her health. God, touch her body, oh God, in the name of Jesus. God, you know what is wrong. You know what's not um, aligning. God, we pray alignment in her body. We pray that all the cells and all of the ligaments and everything in her body will align itself the way it should be. God, we pray over um, her organs. We pray over whatever may be ill in her in the name of Jesus. We pray an abundant life over her, oh God. You said that you came to give us life and life more abundantly. And so, God, we're claiming that abundant life in the name of Jesus, we pray. God, I pray um, for Mike Maldo, who asked for a prayer, oh God, you know what he stands in the need of. Touch him, God, in the name of Jesus, whether it be health, whether it be finances, whether it be uh, emotional stress, whatever it is, oh God, you know all about it. And you said in your word, this poor man cried and the Lord heard him and delivered him out of all his troubles. God, we just love you. We bless you. We're still praying for those all the bereaved families from COVID-19. Let me also say, God, I thank you for healing my son. And God, I, I pray for continued healing over his body, God, in the name of Jesus. We pray for all of the bereaved people from COVID-19, the Smith family, God, still praying for them, the Coleman family, oh God, and so many countless names of people who um, have died from COVID-19, so many countless people who are suffering from COVID-19. God, we pray for them. Hallelujah, in the name of Jesus. God, we pray for this nation. We pray healing. Somebody put healing in the chat box. We pray healing over this nation. Only you can do it, God. Not one man can do it, but you can speak to all of our hearts. You can move and breathe upon us, oh God. Help your people, those who call on your name, to instigate peace, to instigate love, to bring about unity, Hallelujah in the name of Jesus over your people. We pray for our leader. We pray for President Trump. We pray for um, President-elect Joe Biden. We pray for all of our leaders that they will submit to you and you only, that they will hear your voice. We pray for every world leader, every leader in the family, every leader over a business, wherever they stand in leadership, let them know that you have assigned them and that they are responsible for how they lead your people. And now, God, we pray for those who had a prayer request too, too embarrassing to put through the chat box, possibly too private to share with anyone. We trust you, God. Somebody say, we trust you, God. We trust and believe that whatever your answer is, whether it's yes, no, or wait a minute, it's going to be better. Somebody shout better. It's going to be better than what we've ever expected. In Jesus' name we pray, and we thank you, God. Amen, amen, and amen. Well, we just bless, we, first of all, we just bless God 
I see you guys are celebrating God. Um, I wanted to put this up here too um, as we were praying. Um, another, is it Sat, Salt Lick? Um, said, I think the slavery stuff in the Bible is scary. I'm glad it's Old Testament stuff and not New Testament. But even in the Old Testament, a lot of people miss this. Salt Lick, if you're another Salt Lick, if you're still here, let me know. What a lot of people miss is that God was never into slavery. We miss this part of the Bible. We talk about this part of the Bible all the time, but we miss it. We always talk about the children of Israel. Remember the children of Israel and Moses said, let my people go. Who sent Moses to say that message? It was God. And why was he saying, let my people go? Because the Jewish, or the Hebrew people, I shouldn't say Jewish people, the Hebrew, Hebrew people were in slavery. They were in bondage and God did not like it. So you should never <coughs> question about the slavery stuff, whether it's in the Old Testament or the New Testament, God was not pleased. <laughs> and so that's why it's so important that we read our Bible. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Hallelujah. Um, and I'm praying, I don't know if Lakeisha needs healing, but I'm praying Lakeisha healing over your body in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Thank you so much, darling. Thank you, uh, Seema. Good to see you. You know, some people just like, I don't know, I just feel like Seema's like a sister from another mother. But you put a side by side, we might get past the sister. She is so beautiful. <laughs> beautiful inside and beautiful outside. Love you, girl. Good to see you. And so now I want to give you a few words of encouragement before we go out of the door. You know, when it seems like it is its darkest, <clears throat> When it seems like you just can't, you can't take it anymore. When it seems like you're ready to throw your hands up. God is so good at coming in at that time. You know, they say in our in our churches, and some of the, what we say, the older people say in our church, he may not come when you want him, but he's right on time. <laughs> and I believe that's because God wants you to take your hands off of it. Somebody's watching me on today. And you need to know to take your hands off of you welcome, darling. I'm the one that's blessed by that body of friendship. I'm the one that's blessed. We have to learn to take our hands off of things. Some things we just can't control. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Anybody got children in here and your child gets really sick? You can't do anything about it other than to help, take them to the doctor, and pray. Some things you just can't do. Sometimes uh, you are in a relationship and you want the relationship to continue, but the person is ready to go. And you've done all you could do. You've done the best you could do. But listen, beloved, at some point you got to take your hands off of it and give it to God. And sometimes in your, your job, your career, your ministry, you're really trying to make it work and it doesn't seem like it's going to work. Lakeisha, we got to take our hands off of it. We got to give it to God. Well, you know what? The um, Bible says that man makes plans, but God decides where we should go. And at first, that sounds like, oh, man, God going to decide where I'm going to go. Well, he's just a control freak. Oh, my goodness. But God is always looking out for your best interest. Sometimes we think we know ourselves. We don't know ourselves that well. Think about your 18-year-old self. Your 28-year-old self and some of y'all that are older than that, keep on going. Think about yourself in the past. You thought you knew you. <laughs> but as you got older, you realized you didn't know that much about yourself. <laughs> but God knows us because it says in the Bible in uh, Jeremiah 20, he said, when you were in your mother's womb, I knew you. So he knows every hair that's on our head. He knows what our desires are. And he loves you. And he wants you to win. And, you know, sometimes it seems like you're praying and crying. Praying, crying. <laughs> I can't even say it. Praying and crying. Praying and crying. And you just like, God, are you listening? And then he comes in like a champion. And when he does, when he answers your prayer, dear one, you ought to give him thanks. You ought to give him glory. Some of us give God thanks by breaking into a dance and some by breaking into a song. Some of us say hallelujah. Some of us say thank you. But whatever way you say thank, you ought to say it. As you know, just like mama taught you, when somebody gives you something, you ought to say thank you. 
And when God blesses you, you ought to say thank you. Some of you need to thank God for your spouse. Thank God for your children. I know they get on your nerves sometimes. Sometimes they got too much energy, but you ought to thank them. Thank them for your job. Thank him that he's keeping you yet in a pandemic. That's right. We live in an illusion of control. Let it go. Wow, that's a good one right there. I love that. We live in an illusion of control. But God is sovereign. That means he does what he wants when he wants to. But doesn't mean it in a terrible way. He's always looking out for you and he always knows what's best. Just like when you have a child that wants to eat cookies for dinner. They think you hate them when you don't give them the cookies for dinner. But you know it's not great for them nutritionally and they, they need to eat their dinner first. And then maybe they can get a little treat afterwards because you know what's best. And we've got to remember that God knows what's best and he loves us so very much. And when he answers your prayer, you better say thank you. Today we talked about the scariest scripture in the Bible. And uh, if you missed it, you're going to definitely want to watch this broadcast. You want to turn to that scripture. Don't be so into your religion that you miss what God really wants you to do. And I'm telling you, it's all about love, love, love. You need to go back and read that. <laughs> you need to go back and read that. Well, listen, I've got to go, but you can visit me on the web. Yes, indeed. Thank the Lord for my family food or table and your presence. Thank you so much, darling. And I enjoyed my time when I was with you. You're such a joyful person. So listen, I got to go. I got to go. But you can visit me on the web at www.wisecourtship.com. I'm on social media. Just about everywhere is Wise Courtship or Tony Henderson Mayers. All you have to do is Google me. Just know that I love you and there's nothing you can do about it. And in this day and age of alternative facts, things spinning way out of control, God is still in control. He still sits on his throne. And until Jesus comes back, we got to learn to watch, fight, and pray. Take care. Well, hello there, each and every one of you. Thank you so much for tuning in. Make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, and ring that bell. Click it for me so that you will know anytime I upload a new video. Mm-hmm.